Hey you, yes you. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, guys. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more platforms. Guys, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast. So simple and so easy in one place. Download the free Anchor app today, guys, or go to anchor.fm to get started. I come to make a couple people uncomfortable on this podcast. Yes, that's right. I come to make you uncomfortable. I come to shake you up. I come to push you into new heights, into new depths. I come to push you into your purpose. I come to push you into your destiny. Because that is what divine destiny is all about. Fulfilling your purpose, walking in your calling, and doing the thing that you were sent to this planet by God to do. Your divine destiny. But I come to push you on tonight, today, whenever you may be listening to this podcast, I come to push you. What are you talking about, Toya? What do you mean you come to push me? What are you talking about? Okay, well, let me explain to you guys what I'm talking about. In order for anything great to be achieved, in order for greatness to be birthed, something has to happen first. I want you guys to understand this. A lot of you guys, you hear me say this all the time, and it is very true. It is very true. I'm telling you the truth when I say this, but you oftentimes, if you're a active listener of the podcast, you will oftentimes hear me say that there is greatness within you. There is greatness that lies inside of you. Guys, that's the truth. Okay. That's not a, that's not a pep talk. That's not a, um, you know, uh, some type of motivational quote or motivational phrase or that that's the truth. You really do have greatness on the inside of you. You are not like any other creature that God created. Okay. You do have a specific greatness on the inside of you. But there's a requirement that comes with that greatness. There's a requirement. And that requirement is that in order for anything great to be achieved, in order to produce greatness, in order to become greatness, you must first get out of your comfort zone. Did you hear what I said? I said that in order for greatness to be achieved and in order for anything great to be done. In order for greatness to come about in any way, shape or form, period, upon an individual, you must first get out of your comfort zone. What is your comfort zone? Your comfort zone is the place where you're the most comfortable. It's kind of self-explanatory, but I'm going to break it down even more for you guys. Your comfort zone is some of you guys, you have a certain routine. OK, you have a certain I know because this this was me. Hey, this was me. So there's no shade because this was me. Thank God for newfound knowledge, by the way. But this was me. But some of you guys, you have a specific routine. You have a specific way that you do things. You live inside of a little bubble, okay? You only eat at these type of restaurants. You only eat at, eat at a specific type of restaurant. You only drink a specific type of beverage, um, non-alcoholic, by the way, okay? But um, you only go to specific places. You only socialize with a specific group of people. 
you know, you, you just, you live inside of this bubble. You basically live inside of this little box of what your per- perception is of yourself. You have a self-concept. A self-concept is the way that you view yourself, the way that you see yourself. Guys, have you ever seen a person that you thought was just drop dead gorgeous or just so handsome? Like, oh my goodness, you've never seen anybody this handsome before in your life. You've never seen somebody this beautiful before in your life. And that person has the lowest self-esteem. I mean, their self, self-esteem is just in the trash. They they don't think anything of themselves. They don't think they're worth anything. Guys, that's because the way people see themselves is not the way that you see them. People have a self-concept about themselves. You have a perception of yourself, okay? You, you have a, per- and that ties into what I was just speaking about, the comfort zone. You have a certain memorized type of you you have a memorized set should i say you have a memorized set of behaviors perceptions ideas concepts routines okay you have a memorized set of these things that run daily like computer programs they run daily in your life every single day every single day you get it you get up You stumble out of bed on the same side every morning. You go to the shower. You wash yourself in the same exact way every single day. Okay, some of you guys have to have your coffee, your latte, whatever it is that you have to have. But, you know, you're going to have the exact same amount of cream and sugar in your coffee, your, your latte, your Starbucks. Okay, you make it two shots of espresso. Okay, a little easy on the French vanilla whatever your preference is. Okay. The point is, it's the same thing every single day or on a consistent basis. Okay. You go to work, you get in your car, you fuss at the traffic every single day. Then you go to the same job every single day and the same people push the same buttons every single day. And so you feel the same emotions. You're experiencing the same experiences nothing's really changing right guys that's because we have unconsciously not even realizing it we have gone unconscious to this we have developed a memorized set of behaviors and concepts and perceptions about who we think we are and we we see ourselves the way we are and what we do is what we tend to do is we match up with other people that are like minded that are you know, have the same mindset as we have. And that starts to form a comfort zone. Now, the thing about a comfort zone is it's it's very comfortable, okay? You feel real cushiony. You feel real cozy and warm there. It's safe there, you know? It's, It's what you know. It's the familiar. And the sad part is a lot of people never make it out of that they never make it out of their comfort zone and if and if you are one of those specific type of people that you just feel like you are content with your life you are happy with your life you are good then this podcast is not for you okay if you're happy with your life you're good okay you don't feel like you need any improvements you don't need you you're the best possible you that you're going to ever be right now then more power to you okay more power to you but to the person that is seeking better, to the person that is yearning spiritually for more, to the person that is telling themselves every day that there must be something better for me. There must be something greater for me to do. I know that what I'm doing is safe and it's comfortable and it's familiar, but there must be something else for me to do. I feel a greatness just turning on the inside of me. There must be something else for me to do. There's got to be a better way. That's the person that I'm speaking to. That's the person that I'm talking to. And I'm here to tell you, love, that there is a better way. Okay? There is a better way. But that better way, you will never find it within your comfort zone. You'll never find it. You can search the world over, but if you're not willing to step 
outside of that comfort zone, if you're not willing to shake up some things in your life, and I'm talking about shake it up, shake it up, okay? You can't keep doing the same things that you've been doing and expect a different result in your life. You're going to continue to attract the same things. This is what I learned, guys. You are going to continue to attract the same things in your life. If you keep doing the same things, you keep doing the same routine, the same behaviors, you're going to continue to attract the, the same thing. It's going to be like a revolving door, like a hamster on a wheel. Like you're just going to be continuing to go in. You're going to be continuing to go in circles. OK, it's never going to change. Your situation will never change. And yes, you do have greatness on the inside of you. But what happens is when you refuse to come out of your comfort zone, that greatness. It, it, it begins to just go around and around and around like it never it never it never lands. It's just circling. It, it's just circling the airway like it never comes down and lands. It's just going around and around and around because the greatness inside of you is like, hey, you know, I'm here. I'm great. You know, I'm ready to shine. I'm ready to be great. But you're the captain of this ship. So if you don't take heed OK, if you don't make a decision, then you're going to continue to go around and around and around. And I'm here to tell you guys that greatness will not happen. OK, you may accomplish a few things, but in order for you to be great, in order for you to live the abundant life that Jesus Christ himself promised you, you are going to have to come out of your comfort zone. And let me just tell you guys, when you first come out of your comfort zone, it is the most uncomfortable, awkward place that you could ever be in. And I'm telling you this from experience. OK, I don't proclaim to be an expert. I only know what I know. OK. And so I can only talk to you guys from what I know and what I have walked personally when you first make the decision to come, let me, let me just tell you, in order for you to make the decision to come out of your comfort zone, you got to first be sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you are sick and tired of being sick and tired and you just know nobody can tell you any different. You just know within yourself that there is a better way to do life, that God did not put you here to work and struggle and pay bills and die. God did not bless you with children to make you work on a job. X amount of hours and miss your children, like be taken away from them because you're trying to provide a life for them. God did not send you here for that. He would have kept you with him before he sent you down here to struggle. He did not send you down here for that. He sent you down here with a mission and a purpose. And while you are completing that mission and that purpose, Jesus promised you that you can have an abundant life. He said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly means that you did not you do not have to struggle. But I'm going to tell you why I figured out so many people struggle. Why I struggled and why so many other people struggle, because. It kind of goes back to the way you were brought up, OK, it, it, it's it's a long line in a in a huge amount of time and years that have conditioned us to think the way that we think we have been conditioned to think in such a negative way so first you got to begin to recondition your mind you got to you got to replace every negative in your life with a positive. Okay. That's the first step you got to do to coming out of your comfort zone. And then once you begin to do that, you realize that, okay, there's something greater for me. There's something else that God wants me to do. I just wasn't, I wasn't just put here to be mediocre. I was put here to be great. So let me figure out what it is that I need to do to be great. Because I know that in order for greatness to come about, my comfort zone must be disturbed. So let me tell you guys what's going to happen. OK, either you're going to get out of your comfort zone willingly. Or God is going to push you. And you don't want God to push you out of your comfort zone. OK, 
I suggest that you get out of your comfort zone willingly because at least then you can brace yourself for impact, okay? Because it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very difficult in the beginning. It's going to be extremely difficult because you are going to be basically breaking the habit of being yourself. And you're going to be creating a new person, a whole nother person, because you got to realize that the old person that you were, that person wasn't getting the results that you wanted. So you got to rebuild yourself into a whole nother person. When you rebuild yourself into a whole nother person, you'll see that that is the area of your life where new opportunities can come forth. New thoughts can come forth. OK, and let me just tell you guys, if you are praying for money, if you are praying for wealth, if you are praying for God to send a financial blessing, just poof out of the sky in your life, it is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're not going to wake up in the morning and hit the lottery for 50 million dollars. I mean, you might, but there the chances are slim to none. Let me tell you guys what, what you have a better chance at. When you pray and ask God for a financial blessing, for money, for wealth. God doesn't give you money. God gives you a thought. He gives you an idea. It's kind of the same concept if you think of somebody praying for a tree. Okay? They're praying for an oak tree. God, give me an oak tree. God, bless me with an oak tree. Well, God isn't just going to allow an oak tree to fall out of the sky. But what is he going to do? He's going to give them a seed. He's going to give them an oak tree seed. So when you ask, when you ask God for money, when you pray and you ask for wealth, abundance, money, okay, God doesn't give you money. He gives you a thought. He gives you an idea. And what happens is you take that thought, that idea, it is a seed. It is a spiritual seed that God gives you. Now, if you don't do what you're supposed to do with that seed, that's all it will ever be. It will just be a seed. If you don't do what you're supposed to do with the thought and the idea that God, that idea didn't just pop into your head. OK, it didn't just come out of nowhere. It didn't just come out of nowhere. That idea came from God. That is a seed that God planted on the inside of you. He you ask for money. God gave you a seed. He gave you an idea. Now you got to water, water that seed. You got to nourish that seed. You got to put it in fertilized ground and you got to continue to cultivate and you got to continue to work with that seed until something begins to sprout up. But see, that's a lot of the problem. So many of us are afraid of hard work. We're afraid of hard times. We don't want to come out of our comfort zone. Oh, I really like it here. Oh, the people are really nice here. Oh, I make pretty good money. Oh, I, you know, whatever your comfort zone situation is. Oh, I just can't get with that. Oh, I just can't be like that. Oh, I just can't talk like that. Oh, but I just can't dress like that. Well, you want something that you've never had before, right? But how does that work if you're not willing to do something that you've never done before? If you're not willing to be uncomfortable, then you can never be great. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you become comfortable with being uncomfortable, then you're going somewhere. OK, then you will find that you are unstoppable, but you will never know that you can fly. If you don't put yourself out there, OK, you got to take those steps and each time you take those steps, you'll see that that you're stepping out of your comfort zone and the ground underneath your feet begins to fall away. And then all of a sudden, there's no ground underneath your feet. And some of you may be wondering, well, what's going to happen then? I'm going to fall. No, you're not going to fall. You're not going to fall. And if you do fall, then you fall in Christ Jesus. Because that is the best place to fall. Fall in Christ Jesus. Because what will happen is when you look under your feet and you see that the ground has is gone, that there is no ground underneath your feet. OK, what you used to be able to stand on is not there anymore. Guys, that's when you figure out that you can fly. You can fly. You can soar. You have soaring ability. You have greatness within you. But greatness does not come about 
until your comfort level has been disturbed. Guys, get out of your comfort level, okay? That's where your success is. It's on the other side. Your comfort level is on another side, okay? It's on the it's on the opposite side. Your blessings, your success, your prosperity, your wealth, your happiness, your love, your peace, your joy, all of that, all of those components of that abundant life that God promised you. This is not something he said you, this is not some something that somebody told a story about it. This is something that God himself promised you. He promised you an abundant life. But the components to that abundant life, it is not inside of your comfort zone. You will never find it. That's why you got to get out of it. Get out of it. Yeah, I know you've been doing it this way since you were 15, but do it another way. Try it another way. Because guess what? Your blessing ain't in the way that you've been doing it. That's not, it's not there. You got to come out of that way. Greatness will not happen until you step out of your comfort zone.